Right. So Todd of Todd's Workshop has found that an arrow sent out of a crossbow or bolt will go through a sandbag, but your typical bullet will not. One of the conclusions he came to is that momentum is the critical number in determining the outcome. I think that may be mistaken, and I want to show why. But first of all, what I want to do is replicate the results. I got the basically the original setup here, sandbag, backstop. I'm going to hit it with a 9mm first. There's our entrance for the 9 mil, and as shown before, no exit. Alright, now we'll hit it with the bolt. I have here a 625 grain arrow, got a real heavy point, got my Excalibur Axiom. This should send the arrow at about 250 feet per second. Let's see what we get. And there we have our arrow poking through quite handily into our target. Now that we have replicated the experiment, I'd like to take a deeper look into why I think that momentum is not the critical number in determining how well one will be able to shoot through a sandbag. Now, where did I leave that cap? So now, why don't I think that momentum is the critical number? When I did my initial little spreadsheet, I made a momentum and energy calculator. I weighed this, shot it through this, did the numbers, learned something. And then just for the fun of it, I decided to throw 9mm ammo in there just to see what results I got. And I ended up getting basically the same momentum number, 0.5 something. I have to interrupt myself there for a second. My actual numbers were with a light arrow, 0.43 slugs, with a heavy arrow, 0.69 slugs, and 0 0.60 with 9mm. So I can make my same crossbow shoot higher or lower momentum numbers than a 9mm. So what is our actual key variable? I think it is actually sectional density. This arrow here at about 0.344 inches thick. A 9 millimeter is about 0.355. So less than 12 thou difference. With, a, with an experiment as messy as shooting an arrow through sand, I don't think that's enough to make a difference. So if our momentum number is basically the same, what's the actual difference? Well, the kinetic energy isn't the difference because the kinetic energy numbers is essentially flipped in favor of the arrow, despite the fact that this one here is about 85 foot-pounds, 9 millimeters, uh, 350 something. And now, in fluid dynamics, and I'm not saying sand is a fluid, but if the math works out at all similar, it'll help out, it goes up with the square of the velocity. So if the arrow, as it travels through the sand, loses, say, 5 foot-pounds of energy per inch of sand, just picking these numbers out of thin air, and let's say it goes through 8 inches of sand on, and so on average it loses We'll say 40 foot-pounds of energy. About half. Now we switch it over to the 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter is going roughly four times faster, which means the resistance is going to go up 16 times because it's roughly the same diameter. We're, instead of losing 5, we're losing 5 times 16 times 8, or 640 foot-pounds of energy lost, which is significantly more than what it started with. So that math's a little bit sloppy, and I wouldn't put too much faith in it because sand's not really a fluid and um, I might have hashed up something else. If that's even close to the way it reacts, I think that explains it a fair amount. How does the thing with so much less energy go through so much more? When we add in the new variable, it becomes apparent that the ability of the projectile to penetrate the sandbag correlates much better with the sectional density rather than the momentum. And I think what happens is, is that we've associated momentum with density which kind of makes sense because when you're talking about increasing the momentum of, say, a 4570 bullet, you're essentially making the bullet longer because you don't have the opportunity to make the diameter bigger. So you make it longer, which is greater sectional density. Sure, it goes slower, and maybe the energy stays roughly the same, 
but momentum and sectional density go up. So that's what I think it is. It's something like fluid dynamics, not exactly, but close. And sectional density is the real number that we should look at. So what I want to do is I want to shoot this through the sandbag a few times and just see how much energy is actually lost through it. So here's our setup. We have our arrow backstop, our chronograph, and sandbag. We're trading into ever increasing danger. We have a result. 203. Something tells me that a precision instrument, like a chronograph, is not made for sand. Who would have thought? 161. Messy experiment, messy results. So my post-sand arrow velocity experiment got a little bit messy. Every time the arrow went through, it kept on bringing sand with it, throwing an error, messing me up. I should, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to add like another barrier to get rid of the sand. But I got two numbers, 161 and 200 something, which somewhere in the middle you have about 175, which if you do the number calculation, ends up equaling 40 foot-pounds of energy at 175 FPS, which is within the range of what I said earlier. All of that said, if you think of it the other way around, imagine the sand impacting the bullet and the arrow. The sand is going to affect the movement of those objects relative to, proportionate to the weight divided by surface area of the projectile. You need energy to get the work done, but if you have none of the efficiency to do it, it's not happening. Well, folks, thanks for helping me fill in my driveway. See you next time.